leaked photos showed up on Instagram this week with images of what are believed to be CVO Street Glide and Road Glides for 2023 with the 121 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 engine and some other changes. I think I found 10 things worth talking about. Let's get into it. Let's start by taking a look at the wheels. They have these cast laced wheels that we have seen before, but I have not seen them on the CVO models in the last couple of years. So that seems to be a change. And number one is right here on the wheel, brakes. Those brakes are new. We get a better look at them from this angle and that definitely looks like the radially mounted monoblock four piston caliper Brembo brakes that we see on the Pan America. New, better brakes. That seems like a good move. And they're attached to item number two, which is suspension. Those big bold Brembo brakes are tied to a set of inverted front forks. If the brakes bleed over from the Pan America, could the front forks be from the Pan America also? And if so, what kind of travel should we expect? The Pan America has seven and a half inches of travel. Now, the street glides and road glides are currently four and a half inches. I don't know if we need seven and a half inches on a highway bike, but five to six inches might be a nice improvement. Three, fairing. This one jumps out and I know you've been staring at it, so let's see what we have here. The most obvious thing is the new design, which seems larger to me with more angular design and less gentle curves. We appear to have a larger opening for the vent and of course, a new windshield mounting area. Don't worry, I'm sure Clockworks is already working on a new design to fit these new models. Now I would say the way the headlight area is cut back on the sides means we're going to see the turn signals now integrated into this area of the fairing. Notice we don't see any turn signals at the bottom of the fairing like the current Road Glide models. It also appears we have some level of color matched spoiler coming down from the fairing toward the crash bars, which is not new to CVO models, but leads me into item number four, the lower spoiler. For lack of a better description, I'm calling this the lower spoiler. Someone out there, please correct me with a better description if I'm wrong, which is frequently, just ask my better half. She'll tell you I'm wrong a lot or any of the internet trolls that like to comment on my channel. This area definitely looks larger to me and it looks like it's designed to force more air through this area. And that makes sense because this is the area we typically see the oil cooler located. So a bigger motor might need a bigger oil cooler and might need more air flowing across it to help keep this big engine cool. Since we're already talking about it, let's get into that next. Five, engine. The new engine is a 121 according to the badging, which is about the right increase for the next step up from the existing 117. Looks like maybe a color matched accent trim at the top of the heads. Hopefully some of the stuff that they learned with the King of the Baggers is making its way into this motor as well. The 135 crate engine that was just released last week had taken a lot of technology from what they learned from the King of the Baggers and had it incorporated into that build. So let's hope some of that stuff works its way into production engines for the consumers in the future, maybe starting with this particular 121 engine. Also note, the horn has been relocated and the coil is now located in its place, which is something we've already seen on some of the soft tail models. Six, badging. So the tank has a new badge I've not seen before. And the way this design kind of stretches off at the top of the lettering, I think it's supposed to give you the impression that this thing is moving fast. I'm not sure I like it, but like most things, I expect it will grow on you over time. I know some people are going to say this photo looks photoshopped because the fairing is way too big in this particular image. Personally, I think that is just something with the type of camera and the angle that the photo was taken from. I mean, if you could do that good a job photoshopping the rest of this bike, why would you do such a lousy job on the fairing? So I don't think that's photoshopped in. Now, just cause I don't think it's photoshopped doesn't mean I'm convinced that these are production bikes that we're gonna see in the immediate future. These could actually be prototypes or something else that someone saw, got copies of the photos and just assumed that they're new CVOs. But there are some things in this design that do look like what we see on the CVOs. For example, it has a heel and toe shifter. Those are things we're not seeing on the standard models now, only on the CVOs. I've been hearing rumors of a new engine was coming also. I was hoping it might be announced at Daytona, but that was a no bueno. Okay, next we move over to the photo of the Street Glide. We only get one angle, but I can tell you as a Street Glide guy, I'm struggling to like this fairing. The more angular design reminds me of an Indian Chieftain. To be honest, I'm not really that big of a fan of the Indian Chieftain fairing. 
and I like the smooth, gentle curves of the Batwing over this more angular design. But, you know, then again, I don't get to design Harley Davidson's motorcycles, so I'm gonna have to live with it if this is what they come out with and I decide I want a new street glide. Again, we see integrated turn signals into the fairing, but the vent in the fairing does not appear to be as large as the road glides, and it's located lower in the fairing than the current vent location. Also note, the trim under the headlight seems to be separate from the fairing, so maybe you can change the headlight without removing the whole fairing now? The way the ring comes in around the headlight and then breaks back at the bat wing makes me think that the ring is part of the turn signal design as well, as the lights that we're seeing coming down the bat wing. Eight, fork air deflectors. Since the turns have been relocated, we now see what appears to be wind deflectors in their place, which hopefully would relieve some of the updraft we get. You know, us guys with long beards who have updraft and it puts their beard out here, uh, I just can't get with the fork fangs that are on the existing street glides, the, the aftermarket stuff, but I hear they work really well. So maybe these wind deflectors will help with some of the complaints about bobbleheadedness or the updraft that you know, blows the beard back in the face. We can only hope. I know it's something that us guys with long beards would definitely appreciate if it works. Nine, windshield. This is definitely going to be a new windshield design and I'm concerned we're going to end up with some electronic version with height adjustability. Personally, I'm not a fan of that. And yes, I have tried it on the Indian motorcycles and it does seem to work, but it also seemed like the windshield moved around a lot more in the wind, like it was less stable. And to be honest, it's not a feature I have felt like I needed on my street glide in the last six, seven years. 10, intake. In this view, we still don't get a great look at the intake, but we can definitely see it is a new design, but it's hard to say much more about this, except that it makes sense since it's a new engine as well. Assuming these are the missing 2022 CVOs that were not released in January, what do you think? The question for me is when will we see these bikes? Do you think Harley Davidson will announce them soon? Or do you think we may have to wait all the way till July when Harley Davidson has their 120th anniversary celebration in Milwaukee? There's also a few inconsistencies on the road glide that I'd like to point out. In this picture, we have a chrome engine guard, chrome heel and toe shifter, but a black primary cover. And if you look closer, you'll see the handlebars are blacked out as well as the floorboards. But if we jump back to the other side, we have chrome exhaust. This seems a little strange to me, and at best is inconsistent with the chrome and black finishes that they've been doing. Usually the engine guard, the heel toe shifter, the floorboards, the exhaust, the handlebars, they all match for whatever trim that particular model has, whether it's chrome or black. So leave me a comment. Did I miss anything in these photos that you might've spotted? Do you think new brakes and suspension, integrated turn signals, and a bigger motor is enough to move the needle and get people to consider upgrading to new CVOs or possibly other touring models that may inherit these changes in the next year or two? The change in suspension in the front end made me wonder would they change the suspension in the rear? A lot of people have been calling for a monoshock rear suspension on the touring models much like they did on the soft tails. I couldn't find anything in the pictures that indicated a frame change which is what I would suspect for that big of a change in the suspension for the rear of the bike. It may be there, but I couldn't find it in the photos or anything to indicate so. Of course, there are gonna be comments that Harley Davidson is copying Indian, especially if this thing has an electronic windshield and with the more angular designed front fairings. But everybody said the Indian Sport Chief was copying the Lowrider S. I mean, at what point can you say something's really original? Who got there first? At what point is some bike not a derivative from some other bike? And, you know, I don't really care as long as I like it and I like what they're selling and I like the brand. In the end, I wanna know what you think about these new models. Even if these are CVO models, these changes are likely to trickle down in the next few years to the other touring bikes like the Road Glide Special, the Road Glide Limited, the Street Glide, the Ultra. So what do you think of these changes? And would you like to see these things trickle down to the other touring models? Or are you still holding out for that Revolution Max bagger? Are these changes a sign that Harley Davidson is moving in the right direction? And if so, and you're an existing owner, is these changes a big enough move to convince you to trade in or buy a new bike? 
All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you do that YouTube thing, subscribe down below. Don't forget to ring the bell. Y'all stay safe, keep on riding, and we'll see you in the next one.